Okay, guys, I'm here today with Nick Salis and Danny Meyer. Huge honor for me. Guys, they're the Bolo brothers. And today they're, they're going to teach us here. Uh, they're filming an entire structure all about lapel passing and they're really, really good on that. And uh, today they will show, show us here one of their favorite moves about lapel passing. And uh, what's the name of the instruction, Nikki? Uh, it's gonna be called modern lapel passing. So we literally go through all the lapel guards, dismantling them, breaking them down piece by piece. Literally, we don't leave any stone unturned. We go over literally every lapel guard and uh, we're excited to show you guys what we put together. No, that's awesome. You guys, they're great instructors. You guys will see like, how many details they put on it and uh, this and that, so let's do it, Nick. Yeah, so I just wanna uh, give you guys kind of like a, a uh, kind of rundown of what we're going over. So we go through everything from like lapel prevention to actual guards, like worm guard, squid guard, and how to dismantle those and make sure that you understand how to beat those. Uh, but just starting off, like we start from the very first one, lapel lasso. I just want you guys to understand that there's lots of ways that we could just prevent the lapel guards from happening altogether, making sure that we're safe uh, from the very beginning. So before they even get the lapel lasso in, there's lots of things we can do. We could preemptively put a C-grip here so that I can intercept the lasso foot from hooking and going straight to a leg drag before they can even get any connection going. If they do sling that lapel lasso in, there's things we can do from here, right? The hand is open on this side, I'm free to strip the grip here, and we make sure that we're never tied down in the first place. But the one that I wanna show uh, that really helped me because I train with this guy all the time and he's one of the best lapel guard players I've ever rolled with is how to beat the squid guard. And I call this one the squid killer because literally once you do it, like there's no more squid guard left. So the squid guard is as such, he starts entangling the near leg and we're here, all right? So when you're in the squid guard, we're always trying to monitor this far leg, making sure they can't take our back, they can't sweep us. But one of the most annoying things that you go against uh, when you're going up against an experienced squid guard player is when they lift their hips up and when they're able to close this space, right? So right away, and exactly, see how he ducked his knee under my leg? This is death. But this move still works even in the worst case scenario, even when they get the squid guard completely latched on, right? So what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to get my foot in the middle of their body where their torso and their lower body connect. Right? So if I can frame the center of their body here, it kills all their options from the squid guard. So all I need to do is preemptively put my frame in the middle of the body like so. This is gonna keep their hip pinned to the ground, stopping them from rotating, getting orbit sweeps, getting matrix back takes. And now all I have to do is put myself in a position where I'm facing them square on. So I'm gonna concede top to just fall back. But I'm falling back with the frame in the middle of the body. So now Danny can't sling this leg over because I'm controlling it. He can't sit up because I'm framing the body, but most importantly, I can back up, back up, until this arm is completely straight. Let's rotate. When this arm is completely straight, I've exhausted the range of motion of control of the lapel. So now I'm gonna be able to pummel my heel to the inside, like so, and watch. Technical stand up, and now we're in a position we call like kind of a pit stop for the cross step. I can slide my heel to the floor. And, and you better read over there. Exactly, that's, that's we're out of the lapel guard. So that's always first and foremost. If we're out of the lapel guard, we won. But if I can chain passes to dominant positions right off the gate, cross step, right? I can pummel my foot back to the inside, pass to the far side, right? That's awesome. At the very least, you know, if they're staying sticky, right? I can wedge my knee, I can start going for barren bolos if I'm feeling risky. Man, that's awesome. So we go over all of this. I think oh. I think like one really cool thing here too is like as soon as he disengages, as someone who plays a lot with lapels, I'm right away trying to restart my lapel game again. And because of that cool detail that he showed at the beginning is as soon as he gets out and I'm like trying to sling that lapel in, he's already intercepting it, he's already passing, and it's like because of all those other options that he has, he's already like shutting it down, so I can never get something started again. So it's okay. kind of wild. Oh, uh, that's what I would say, Danny. And uh, Nick, I'm gonna ask you to repeat. So yeah. many times I see people teaching lapel passings, and they show like 100 steps in order to get <laughs> yeah. it. Everything you showed was so simple. So can Anybody. you can you go back and just repeat the secret? Yeah. That thing you did as well to break the yeah. lapel. Yeah. Okay and how you place the foot on the bed. Of so course. I, I want to see the tree again. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> and I love how simple it is. Uh... So we stress prevention yep. because if we can get ourselves away from getting entangled, yep. then we don't have to worry about anything, right? Then we're safe, we can pass. Always keeping my legs back, that's yep. another thing. We never want to lead with our lower body against a lapel yep. player. So I'm keeping my legs back, now watch. 
preventative. He's pulling my lapel, so I know he wants to play on the lapel. I just take my hand and I put it here. Why? Because I know he wants to put this foot inside and hook underneath my armpit. So why not put your arm already here, waiting for the foot? Got it. That simple. And now look, all I have to do is control this far leg. I start right. climbing past the knee line, no, I and I land your hand. No, I love it. If yeah, go on. Sorry. What was the other one that you break the lapel? Yeah, so another concept that uh, Danny and I explained is that where the grip is placed on the hand is important for us to know, right? So take the squid guard, for example. If they know how to play squid guard, they're always going to hide a lapel on the underside of the palm. So if I try to pull this grip, no break. dice, it doesn't yeah. break. Yeah. They would have to be inexperienced to hold the lapel like this yeah. where I can strip the grip. So right. when they play lapel lasso, right, they're going to put their palm up like so. I got it. So all I have to do is I just need to make sure that I break this grip. So I go around the leg, I feed the tail to this hand, and I strip it. I got it. And already right, going awesome. back to this ankle to pass. That's great. And then the last one, yeah. always step on the bed. So this I is love my, it that one. This is my favorite because everyone thinks, sorry, that the squid is like this complicated guard of feet. Yep. You just have to understand where's the source of the leverage. It's the hip, right? right? But of course, if, if I put my hand here, they're going to armbar me and yep. do all this crazy stuff. So I'm just gonna control the leg, put my foot, try to lift your hip, it's annoying. But I need to take and extract my leg out of their control. So I just frame the shoulder, I fall back. Now I can use my hand to back up. And I back up to make their arm straight, where it's yep. weak, pressing against the stomach. Now look, I can pummel. Yeah, that's awesome. I can technical stand up and deal with this however I want. Yeah, if they're loose awesome. on the pants, out. If they're pulling it tight and I wanna pass right, through it, right away, knee on belly. If they're pulling it in for some sort of like 50-50, right? I can start wedging my knee and start going for leg drags and bearing bowls. There you go, man. That's amazing, Nick. No, I love it how simple it is, you know, and how simple you break that down as well. Thank you. And uh, what are you going to show today? Uh, um, so there's a, a guard called the Polish Worm Rider okay. um, that a lot of high-level lapel players play. And it's this is a guard that is you know, very tricky for a lot of people to deal with. And uh, you know, just to demolish that guard real quick, it turns yeah. out that it's just like the squid guard that, that he showed. All these lapel positions are super easy to just unwind and untangle yep. or strip the grip if needed, if you really understand how they work. Okay. So the Polish worm rider position is kind of like reverse to a worm, but instead of going underneath, he goes over my thigh. So then instead yep. of using his knee to beat my knee line, he's beating my knee line with the lapel first. So we don't get into this like reverse Delaware and battle with the knee line. He's already has, he already has my knee line beat with the lapel. That's why yep. this position is so strong. So if he's able to lift his hip and rotate around, he can attack the backside. Or the reason that this position is also super strong is he can invert to the inside and take my back there as well, where he can't do that the same way with reverse Delaware. So this position here, I'm like super tangled. It's really difficult for me to get out. So there's a couple of ways that uh, we look to escape this position. And one way that I have figured out that's super easy for me is I'm framing the leg across. I kind of blade my body to this side, pinching everything tight. I frame his knee down to slow his rotation to the other side or to make it a little bit more difficult for him to invert underneath because I'm using my knee behind to frame his leg. Once I do this, it's easy for me to go back to the toes. And now I don't need this grip anymore. I go back to his arm. And when I grab his arm here, it's really cool. I grab his arm so that I can step over his head. And now you see this space on the inside where I can't get away. If I go into the danger or what appears to be the danger normally because his lapel, the lapel would be on the other side, when you just pull his worm rider, it's opposite. So the danger isn't actually this way, it's the other way. Um, so now it's easy for me to pull this sleeve up and then just high step myself out. Right, and now right. in this moment, I like to pull his leg and his arm, folding my chest over the top, hugging the hip. And now I get this cross face position where his shoulder is compressed with my chest and I can fold him back nice and tight, just completely trashing that guard. Maybe One more time. Really hard. So I just frame, I come back for the toes, I step out and I pull everything in and now I'm right, able to drop my knee to the hip. Then how did you figure that out? Like, or, or someone taught you or you developed it? How was um, that? This is something that Nick and I developed because 
Uh, I played a lot of lapel guards from white all the way through brown. And, uh, you know, trying to deal with this guy all the time. <laughs> we don't just try to, to beat each other. We literally try to beat ourselves as well. Okay. So we have full conversations like, man, how do I beat your guard? And then we both right. help each other to beat right. ourselves. Right. Um, we firmly believe like, if you don't try to beat yourself, somebody else will figure it out and then they'll beat you. So yeah, I, agree. I, agree. I would rather yeah. beat myself yeah. and no. then fix it and know that, and, or have this guy do it <laughs> instead no, of me. Just, so you, just in the way you guys teach, you can see like how much science there is behind it. Because everything's so well yeah. thought that, uh, no, that's amazing. Yeah, so guys, we just shot an entire instructional with both of them all about lapel passing. And it's gonna come out at bggfanatics.com soon. And maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. And thanks so much. No, thank you, Renata. Thank you so much. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.